Coach Jay-Z here with the Lifetime Athlete, and thanks for joining me in this video today. I hope that your month of October is kicking off well. And this video is a program update for the members of our training tribe, although any viewer may find this useful. This fall, as we do every fall, we're working on our endurance training block. And interestingly enough, endurance is not just cardiorespiratory fitness or all day durability. It's that ability to repeatedly express output and even power, which is one of the reasons why we do quite a bit of a mixology in our training. We do use some low intensity steady state cardio, but we also include interval training and circuit training and even things which look very much like strength and power training, but done in a way to enhance endurance. So if you're interested in any of those things, <clears throat> excuse me, and would like to learn more, by all means, check out the Training Tribe menu item at thelifetimeathlete.com. Now this week, which is the first week of October, and that's the second week, or excuse me, second month of our three month endurance training block, we're going to be using specific programming for every day of the week. Many times we'll have two or three workouts in a week, which we which we may be repeating several times. But this week, we're gonna be very specific. Um, very interesting uh, data that you'll see in the member program document with all the instructions on how to perform the workouts. But what I wanted to do today was just talk specifically about two of the sessions. One of the sessions involves squatting and another involves hinging. And now you might think of the squat and the deadlift as part of the sport of powerlifting, which they are, and they're tried and true strength training exercises, but we can use these as we're doing this week in an endurance training capacity. So first of all, uh, in the squat workout, <clears throat> you're gonna be doing a series of squat techniques. And part of that's because we always wanna be movement smiths who own every position and have mastery of motion in every direction. Well, you'll start off with a basic front squat. And so the front squat can be front loaded any way that you prefer to. That can be in a catch position with a barbell. It could be, be holding a kettlebell in some type of goblet uh, configuration. You can even use your sandbag, but you're going to be front loaded. Next up, you've got the back squat. Weights on the back barbell or sandbag is excellent, although you can use dumbbells or kettlebells in a modified position to accomplish that. Then the Zercher squat, which is actually placing a bar through the crook of the elbows to support the weight. And if you don't happen to have a barbell, you can certainly do that with your sandbag. The overhead squat, fairly self-explanatory. We're gonna be holding a full overhead lockout <clears throat> as we perform the squat motion. And again, this can work with almost any implement. The kettlebell side rack position, we're going to take a catch or a rack position with the kettlebells and we're going to actually orient the bells to the sides of the body. So very basic. Again, you can do this with other implements. We've also got a Bulgarian split squat or a rear foot elevated squat and we'll do one set with the left foot forward, one set with the right forward. Then we finish up with some body weight squats where we're not even loading. And the first one is the Spanish squat. And for the Spanish squat, we're gonna use um, a band or strap behind the knees, actually behind the upper calf, just below the knee joint. And that's gonna allow us to lean back into the squat and not have much forward translation of our tibia. That's the Spanish squat. Now opposed to that is the sissy squat. So you can use that same strap or band and hold it, anchor it in front of you and hold on to it. Then in that case, you can actually get up onto the balls of your feet and, and lean back into the squat slightly. However, you can really drive your knees forward in doing this version. So that's kind of some ways we're going to use the squat to develop not just uh, a high degree of movement capacity and competency, but also endurance. And then when we look at the hinge, we're going to do quite as many sets and reps with the deadlift exercise. However, we're going to be doing quite a few. And one of the things that I often like to remind folks is when you're doing this, make sure that you're taking adequate rest between your sets. So sometimes we do like to push the pace, but not when doing deadlifts. I think a full recovery is uh, highly adequate for, or highly imperative for good technique 
and safety. So the first thing we're going to do is a few sets to warm up a banded deadlift. Now you can stand on an elastic band or even a heavy duty tubing or you can run it under a <clears throat> box if you have one available. Uh, that's, that's a very effective way because in the low plane or the low position you don't have much resistance but it does magnify as you come up. Then we're going to move in five sets of our standard or conventional deadlift, best done with a barbell using, again, fairly standard technique. Um, if you have to use other implements, that's fine. And then we've got the dumbbell deadlift as a finisher, um, which should be done off blocks or at least with the dumbbells elevated slightly to get into the optimal range of motion. So those are just some tips that we're doing this week uh, using traditional strength and power training to affect endurance and all the other information is included in the member program document. Thanks for joining me today and until next time this is Coach Jay-Z signing off from the Lifetime Athlete Training Tribe.